Jason, and welcome to my studio. I am so glad to have you here today. It's a wonderful topic we're going to have. Uh, today is going to uh, we're going to be talking about artist knives. So uh, palette knives and painting knives and how to tell the difference between them. And um, and I've done this little painting. I've got a little painting here. I did. This is a um, I think this is oil. Yeah, oil on canvas. And I did this in a technique that I developed uh, using palette knives and painting knives called Dalbism. So, um, and I'll be showing you lots of different ways that you can use palette knives for mixing paint, for doing all kinds of things. In fact, there's six ways. So if you're already using palette knives in your art practice, I hope that, um, that today's topic will be helpful and you might learn some new things to do. And if you are new to painting knives, um, I hope, hope that this is gonna convince you that you should be using them um, in your art practice. So uh, I'm gonna, the big thing here is talking about wear and tear on brushes. That'll be the first thing that we'll talk about. Um, and using how pa uh, painting knives and palette knives um, will give you an advantage uh, where you can um, save wear and tear and uh, ease of mixing, that type of thing. So let me get a little sheet of paper out here. And uh, actually, you know what, before we start that, let me lay out a bunch of different knives and um, show you what we're talking about. What is a palette knife? So I've got all of these. Let's get this paper out of the way. And also, if you are new to my channel, I welcome you, and I'm so glad to have you here. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And um, if you're on the chat, I'd love to chat with you. And if you are um, like to be quiet, that works too, or just leave a comment later in the comment section. But I, I do love to hear from people, and it makes it a lot of fun. We're a, Great community here. Get all my, these are, I keep my palette knives in a little cup. Palette knives and, and artist knives. So there is a difference between, uh, the, these are all called artist knives. And actually, you know what, let me go ahead and see uh, if anybody has joined us yet um, on the chat. But uh, these are all called artist knives. And um, what, the, there's a difference between a palette knife and a painting knife. So if you look here at all of these, um, can you spot the difference? Because I'll tell you that there are two of them. Let's see, let me look here. Um, wait, there are two of them. <laughs> there are two of them which are um, actually uh, palette knives and all the rest are painting knives. And uh, the difference here is, um, is we have, um, let me, uh, whoops, let me get this to the wrong one here, hold on. There we go. Okay, all right, so here are um, palette knives. I've got palette knives and I've got painting knives. And um, hey, welcome everyone who's, who's joined. Um, hey Davey, Madonna, Joe, great to see you. Um, so these um, palette knives are these uh, items that have no um, hook. So if you just look at the uh, the handle, they have a straight blade coming directly out from the handle. That's technically a palette knife. And a painting knife has a little um, hook on this, and this hook that holds it away from your fingers when you hold it, this is so that paint stays off your hand. And you can use, uh, when you paint, people will use the term uh, palette knife to describe painting knives and palette knives. So, um, and you can really use uh, either of them um, on the canvas, and you can use either of them when you're mixing paint. But um, I have just a variety of different sizes that I like to use. A favorite of mine, I have a couple of favorites. I like this one a lot. Uh, this is by RGM, Low Cornell. Lots of different companies make these. Uh, but I prefer the ones that are metal with a wooden handle, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, here and why you'd want to use a metal one. So. Let's go ahead and get a list going here. So this list, it will be um, six ways. So it's six ways to use the knives. Artist knives. AKA palette knives and um, painting knives. So the first way that you can use it is to, um, is to mix paint right on your palette, and you can move it from location to location. So if you need to, for example, scoop up some paint and move it, um, using one of these knives to do that is much better than using, for example, 
um, a brush or something like that. And um, Okay, so yours, yours have gotten rusty, Joe. Um, yeah, I've got some older ones. This one's got a tiny bit of rust. Um, if you if you want, what you can do is try and just get it all the way cleaned off because it is metal. You should be able to remove the rust by um, going like this with another one, and then you can get you know get it off like that. And hey, Jordan, thank you for joining us, jo uh, Jordan Lawrence. Good to see you. But that's a way, if you uh, have a palette knife that's a little bit uh, long in the tooth, you can um, you know, scrape all that extra stuff off. If you get it on the top of the knife, it isn't as important as keeping the bottom surface and the edge clean. That's the, the real trick here. But, um, but when you mix and move paint using the knife, what you can do is you can save money on your, um, uh, you save money on paint and on brushes. And that's really super important because the ferrule, F-E-R-U, F-E-R, how do you spell ferrule? F-E-R-R-U-L, <laughs> the ferrule of your paintbrush. So let me grab a paintbrush. Um, <clears throat> the, your paintbrushes have got this part, this part where the brush meets up with the handle is called your ferrule. And what you don't want to do is you never want to get paint to go up inside that ferrule. And when we mix paint uh, directly with this, then um, what can happen is uh, we can get a problem where we get paint inside and then um, the brush can get ruined. And uh, once your brush is ruined, so here are some really old cruddy brushes. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be using those just today because I don't wanna ruin my, my nice brushes for the experiment. But, um, but that's what can happen is paint can get up in there and then you get all of the, um, the pieces of the brush splay out. They can splay out for other reasons, but that tends to be the number one problem is if paint has gotten up into the ferrule. And so using a palette knife can really solve that problem. So let's do a little experiment here, a little test. And so let's do a paint mixing test. A paint mixing test. And then let's also do with cleaning, with cleaning tools. So what I would like to look at here is let's look at the things that people will typically use to mix their paint. And if you think about, um, they're, they're basically what people will use is people might use like a plastic spoon or a plastic knife, or they might use a brush. So let me grab a brush. They might use the brush if you're just mixing one thing onto the other, or you're mixing a large quantity of paint before you put it on the canvas. If you're mixing a tiny amount on the brush, that's actually okay, as long as you're just not getting things up into that ferrule. But if you've got a fair amount of paint to mix, using the knife is really key. So here's a knife, for example. So let's use these three things. So we're gonna have a uh, plastic spoon And then we're gonna have, let's just make a little circle here. So we have four things. We've got a plastic knife. We've got a brush. And we've got a palette knife. P-A-L-E, <laughs> palette knife. I cannot spell today, my goodness. All right, so. Let's get a little bit of oil paint here. I'm gonna put some gloves on. And how are you guys doing today, by the way? Is it uh, spring everywhere? Tell me a little bit, um, tell me a little bit about how your spring is going while we mix. Okay, so let's get some paint. How about, let's do, uh, maybe let's do orange and blue together. So let me just get a little bit of uh, blue paint onto each one of these. And what we're gonna do is be testing to see how easy or how hard it is to um, get that wiped off. The reason I wear gloves when I'm um, handling or taking uh, my paint out of the tube is invariably I end up getting some paint on my hands and I wanna avoid doing that. So if it gets on the glove, then I, it'll just, this is a cotton glove and it doesn't matter then. Okay, it's warm and raining in, uh, and so Madonna, my, um, my, sister from, <laughs> my sister in spirit from Missouri, it's uh, 
You said it's raining there a little bit. And it's sunny by you, Joe. And Joe, you're in England. You were originally in Australia and then in England. Well, today it is a little bit of a gloomy day. Gloomy, not, but not bad, just a, like a regular spring day. But um, I'll tell you that the Sensleys, so there's this little skunk family that lives um, in a den really close by, and the Sensleys, um, we named them the Sensleys, but they are uh, out and about, and, um, and so it's a thing you have to be careful when you're outside since the Sensleys are outside. <laughs> All right, let's take a plastic spoon. This is something that people might use to, um, you know, mix paint uh, on their palette or mix, mix something up. But I'll just, let's just look and see uh, what we're going to be testing here is how easy is it to mix with uh, these tools and then, um, and then how easy is it to clean the tool afterwards. Okay, so once we have it clean, let's just set this off over here. Okay, so here's our spoon. There we go. Okay, now let's try the plastic knife. Let's see, because again, these are just things that people will tend to use here. And a plastic knife. So plastic knife, uh, since this is flexible, and the plastic spoon are flexible, they do a pretty good job of getting that paint mixed up. Okay, now let's try a brush. So, um, and I'm using an old cruddy brush. Uh, so I'm having the brush, what I'm not able to do is get at these lower layers here. I know I've got some of the blue all the way down at the bottom. I have to wiggle it to get it all the way mixed. And there is a lot of paint left on here, if you can see that. Look at all that paint that's left on. I can't, I'm having a hard time scraping that off of me. There we go, okay. So there's the brush. And now let's try a uh, palette knife. I'm gonna use a painting knife. People will use the term palette knife and painting knife uh, kind of interchangeably. So let's just use the, this is a metal knife with a wooden handle. All right, so there's that. And then we'll set that here. So if you look now, so we have our different ways, but if you look at, at the amount of paint that is left, there's very little paint left on the palette knife after I wiped it up. Let me try and give one more wipe. Okay, and the paint brush, we have quite a bit of paint on the brush and we also have a lot stuck in there. Let me try and wipe off any extra so we have as much paint saved as possible, but we still have, if you can see that, a lot of paint there. Um, here, plastic knife. We can get most of that off. So we just have a little bit left. And the spoon, plastic spoon. Let's see if we can get most of that. Oops, I see we have a little we haven't mixed. There we go, okay. So we can get most of that off on the spoon. So the next thing to test would be Let's see how easy it is. So it's so if you have, um, the ideal is that you don't use a brush to do your mixing, especially if you have a large amount of paint because you see all of the paint that was wasted here on the brush. Um, and then if you have a plastic spoon or plastic knife, those can do in a pinch. Ideally, you can use a palette knife. So when we clean this now, this will be the, the test to show how hard is it to clean any of these, any of these things. So if we look first to clean the knife, um, that's it. So that's all the paint that we lost here. If we look at the brush, um, I'm working on this, but I have see paint got up into the ferrule, and that means that this brush is going to be ruined here. Uh, very soon, and I'm still working to get the paint off of the brush. So here was our palette knife, here's the brush, and I still have, it still has a lot of paint in there, so I'll show you the next steps that we'd have to take to, to do it on the brush. Here's a plastic knife. 
You can see though that there's residue on the plastic. That's the difference between if you have a metal knife versus a plastic knife. Plastic will tend to hold the paint in a way that oil or that um, either acrylic or oil that the metal does not. If you use a spoon, now you have to go back in and um, wipe it and you know do that kind of thing. Let me try a little bit more with the knife. But if you can see, the palette knife left a very small amount of residue. These other methods, um, I'm wasting more paint, but um, but we still don't. We have this one clean, so let's go and um, I'll dip this in water just to show what we have to do now to continue to clean stuff. So let's get some water when you're doing palette knife versus a thing. So in this experiment, we're testing. Uh, painting knife, palette knife, metal uh, versus using plastic spoon or plastic knife. How easy are they to mix the paint and then how easy are they to clean? And then here's the thing we absolutely want to avoid doing is mixing any kind of quantity. Um, and hey, Kenise, good to see you. Um, yeah, Joe, what's happening here is the brush and the spoon hold a lot of paint. So let me just dip in the water. I'll just dip the uh, palette knife. And you can see that after wiping it off on the towel, it's, it's clean. We don't have any residue. If I take the, the um, just dip the paintbrush in, um, look at all of the paint that we still have. Oops, let me move this over here. Get all of our paper towels here. So um, then if we have the brush, you can see, look at that, I'm still working to get all of that paint out of there. It's still stuck in the brush, and this is just a cleanup nightmare. Look, we're still, <laughs> still cleaning that brush, and um, my goodness, it's just really caught in here. This is oil paint. This is just uh, taking a lot here to clean this, and there's still more to clean. Let me just show you the knife. So the plastic knife held more of the uh, paint than the metal and that's why people will recommend to buy a when you're going to buy up a, a knife for mixing or for applying paint definitely go with metal um, and you can get all metal or metal with a wood handle but um and hey art squad good to see you and thank you for joining so look at this when we use a plastic knife I'm still cleaning it and getting it and I've got actually a little bit of staining from the pink on here another note is if you ever use a spoon or a knife or anything like that to um, to do your artwork don't ever use that for eating again so just reserve that just for eating so here with the spoon um, I can get that clean um, but do you see that here with all the methods for mixing, the palette knife left just a tiny amount of residue, and then when we dipped it in water, we had no residue. The paintbrush had a ton of waste of paint, and look, we're still working to get that clean. This one was the knife, had a fair at the plastic knife, and it had residue. And here was the plastic spoon, which also had a fair amount, and it was harder to clean. So the big trick here is, and this poor brush. Um, I'm gonna. I'm still working on this brush here. Look at this. Is still. I still am trying to get all the paint that was caught in here. And when you're painting, you don't want to. This is a quick way to make mud in your work. Is if you can't. I mean, just look at all of this that, that's still in here. If you can't get your brush clean, so I'm gonna. After this session, I'll go in and try and spend more time working on this brush. But this is um, the paint got up into the ferrule when we mixed and that kind of thing which is absolutely something that we want to avoid when we're working. So for nothing else, if, if you just used a, a painting knife only for mixing paint, you'll save money on your paint, you'll save wear and tear on your brush, and what's really super important is, um, and hey Art Squad, you just got out of school and it was good to see you, and, um, and so this, uh, this deal with the brush is that um, the cleaning time, I mean, my gosh, it's like so much more enjoyable to just use this. You just scrub, up, droop, and then you're done. And here with the brush, um, a person's gonna be, you know, kind of 
just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning, which is not a lot of fun. Because cleaning is not the fun part of painting, right? We want to do just the fun part. Okay, so that was number one, is missing paint. The reason why you'd want to use um, a palette knife or six ways that a palette knife can be done or can be used. So, um, so another way uh, to use a knife in your practice, your art practice, would be to test and judge colors. And so um, what we mean by that is, let's say that you had, let me grab the paint again. Let's say that you have, you're working on a painting and you are trying to decide if you have the right color yet. So if I hold a painting up that I did here, and let's say I'm trying to decide um, if my color is correct before I go up to the easel, what I can do is take a little bit of that paint and just hold it up to the canvas. And then if I don't like it, I just, you know, wipe it off, get rid of it again, and then wipe that off on a cloth and already that's clean. I can make adjustments to the color and that type of thing. So that's the second way that we can use that we can use our artist knives. So the third way that we can use artist knives is to create and, um, oh, hey Chrissy, good to see you. Thank you for joining. So this, uh, this other way that we can use artist knives would be to um, create impasto highlights. So um, an impasto highlight would be uh, something that's thick. And um, like, for example, you might want to have a highlight on a, um, like on a piece of fruit or on a, uh, anything like a leaf, or there might be anything that we wanted to create a little accent. So this is an impasto mark right here. If you look, um, well, this is all impasto, but if you look, there's right here a little highlight. So um, that just goes on with a knife. And so you can put these, uh, what's really great is you can just use the paint and pick it up with the knife and then you can place it anywhere that you want and just these little marks. And if I wanted to create a highlight or a shadow or a mark, do you see these little tiny marks that we can make with the side of the brush? Or, or if we just spread it across with the brush, we can make a flat, smooth surface. Or we can put on the canvas, we can put marks that are just uh, thick and uh, directional and that type of thing. And it would be, it's harder to get those marks with just a brush. All right, so let's uh, set this over here. And then the fourth way that we can use a, you know, a that we can use these artist knives is um, we can do a smearing technique. So let me show you a painting that I did using a smearing technique. So um, this is a very abstract painting, and I did uh, I took knives and then did a smearing across the canvas. So this painting is dry. But um, if you look all the way across here, the colors can blend and smear. And this was all done with knife work. And I'm just running the blade over it again. This, again, this painting is dry. But, um, but the paint comes across and you can scrape and smear in a way that you can't do this type of effect with a brush. You can uh, smear things with a brush, but you can't go back over and over it again and smear things across. So there are these optical, um, optical things that you can do uh, with a knife uh, the, by holding it to the side. So you hold the knife uh, flat, almost flat to the canvas and scrape across. So that it just goes like that. So scraping across. And so if you had all different colors, then the colors will uh, mix when you go across like that. And Caitlin Marie, hey, good to see you. I've missed you, Caitlin. I'm, um, I missed you on uh, YouTube. I haven't seen you for a while on YouTube, so it's wonderful to see you, and I hope that school is going well. And so uh, let me show you another painting. And so, uh, Caitlin, you said that um, 
Oh, you tried out painting with a palette knife. Oh, I would love to see that. That's awesome. Yeah, and you know, palette knife painting is really fun to do. I love it. I love it. So, um, so this is another way that you can use palette knives. Is um, So I showed you like just kind of an abstract form where the color is just swept across and that type of thing. But you can also do um, blending. So this painting was made entirely with palette knives. And um, so all of the little details on the cactus, the little highlights, those were just done. You just take a little bit of paint and put the paint and just hold the, um, you hold the knife at an angle and do a little scrape like that. Again, this painting is completely dry, but you can get these layered effects. And you just basically do a skip coat over the top um, with a knife. And so you can even get like this little cactus. I did a little cactus here in the background and then the mountains. This was a painting I did of Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, but again, this was all done entirely with a knife. So thank you, you guys, for seeing that. And I appreciate that you guys are here. So now let's do, uh, so we can do a smearing effect and then we can do, um, we can allow the colors to mingle. Mingle. And then we can do um, also the uh, fifth thing that we can do is we can create hard edges with a palette knife. So what I'd like to do now is I want to show you, let me get, I have a little board that I um, put up ahead of time. So and I made it two different ways. So the, um, what I'd like to show you would be these different, so we can make hard edges, I should do that, but let me show you the sixth way is going to be doing special effects. And special effects are always fun. And that's going to be um, Daubism. And then a, a um, Italian term called Scraffito. S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O. And Scraffito is basically means scratching or just means scratched. So you can sign your name with a knife. You can do all kinds of things using that. So what I did is this is just some paint that I put down flatly with a brush. I have two of those. And I thought what we could do is do... I'll show you if you painted with a paintbrush versus if you paint with a palette knife on a smooth um, surface of paint. Or, and then what I did here is I just took um, and laid a whole bunch of paint thickly, and then we just have them separated into different squares. But let's use the palette knife across on a smooth surface, and let's use the palette knife um, across on a textured surface, and then let's compare what we can do with a paintbrush to. Um, to look at the difference and oh hey NCS Fluffy and thank you so much for joining I um, I appreciate that you're here Ohio I think that means hello in Japanese I believe that uh, Ohio so I think that's hello all right so now let's go ahead and get some color here so let me get uh, get some paint and let's put some paint on these two places here and we'll use a brush and we'll use a palette knife to uh, get the different effects. So how about a little bit of, uh, let's see, do we wanna do red? Let me get, actually, let's get, let's do red. Red, uh, red is nice and bright. Let's get red. Okay, so this is just oil paint. You could use oil paint, acrylic, you know, whatever. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the palette and then we'll use a, um, we use the palette knife and we'll use a spoon. So this is cad red hue. We'll just get uh, some paint out that can be used with a brush and some paint that we can we, uh, we can compare effects by using the oh, here we'll get a little bit of white. And one thing that's really nice is white paint or light colored paint over a dark paint is a really nice way to do uh, knife work. It comes out, it looks really well. When they, um, um, has it gone cold all of a sudden? Oh, I put the gloves on, uh, Chrissy. I do that when I'm handling my oil paint.
because uh, the, the tubes, sometimes if there's any kind of residue around on the tube, if it comes out, then that linseed oil gets on there and it's really gummy and sticky. And so I just put gloves on when I'm taking the paint out and that way I never have, um, I never have a situation where I get paint on my hands and I don't have to wash my hands afterwards. Once I get it on the brush or whatever, then I just use my regular uh, you know, hands or whatever, but this way it doesn't make a mess. All right, so now let's look over here. Whoops, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so, and speaking of something, I just, I actually did just, <laughs> just did stick my finger in the oil paint. So I'll wipe that off, there we go. Okay, so yeah, no, it wasn't cold. Oh, you're pulling my leg, oh. <laughs> oh, Chrissy. Chrissy, you are funny. All right, so, uh, so let's take a knife. And again, here, we've got our two um, palette knives and we have painting knives and people, um, it's actually, it's considered acceptable to just use them, the, the terms interchangeably uh, or just call them all palette knives. But I'm gonna just take this little guy here and let's put with a brush first, let's take a brush and let's just paint some paint um, on here. So let's just move some paint with just the brush. And when we are painting with just the brush, then we can get um, these effects and you see that we have brush marks, which can be very pleasing. Now, if I wanted to move the paint off of the brush, there's a limited amount I can do. And if I wanna put it on, let's say I wanna put kind of a lot on, I can do something like that and get a brush effect. So there are ways to get thick paint or put thick paint on with a brush. And now let's put, uh, let's put some on with the knife. So uh, this will be the knife side. So let me just get a mark like that. But when you put paint on um, with a brush, you're gonna get a different effect than when you put it on with the palette knife. So I can come back and do, I can re-scoop it and I can do some things like that. I can move my, this is called scraffito. So if I um, wanted to put, for example, scraffito on here, which means that I'm gonna take paint away, I can do that a little bit with the brush if it's thick, but it's um, not as elegant as it is if I use, for example, the tip of the knife. So if I wanted to sign my name, for example, I can do that very easily with the uh, palette knife, but if I wanted to try and sign my name with the brush, let me get just a thin, uh, a layer across here. Um, I can, but it does not, um, you see it, it has a quite a bit of different character. The scraffito means that you're, um, in Italian, you're um, scraping through and doing a, um, a thing like that, and so, um, Oh, and so let me see what the chat is saying, what you guys are saying. Okay, oh, um, you did a little, you put a picture on Instagram when you were a little sprat. Oh, I wanna see that. I'm gonna take a look um, and, and see what you've got. And hey, Tiana, good to see you. So if you see here, it is difficult with a brush to get any kind of a scraffito or a thing where you paint some, you know, you dig in with a thing. And really um, on the brush side here, uh, we're limited in how we can't get a really smooth, shiny effect because we have more of a brushed effect. If you compare, if we move, if you compare, the side that's done with the knife is different than the side that's done with the brush, and it's very shiny. So in the Daubism technique that I do, so I developed this technique uh, and using a palette knife, um, this is a, it leaves a super shiny finish, so it's always gonna be shiny like this. And there's no varnish on here, but it's shiny because when you put one mark on with the knife and you just leave it, the paint will uh, dry in a super shiny way, just like you can see the difference here, a brush texture versus a, um, a knife texture. So we can do you know, all kinds of things, but this is on a smoothly painted surface. So next, let me show you what, um, 
what we can do if uh, and hey painting for beginners it's good to see you so Caitlin you said that you've got your oh you've handed all your assignments in now and you have to do your practical okay oh Caitlin I think you should somehow include makeup in there somehow because of your um, of your channel or um, self-esteem thing something like that that would be awesome so uh, so now that we've talked about how to use um, comparing knife work on something smoothly painted versus a paintbrush um, on something on a smooth surface now let's go over so again I just put uh, regular paint there's just a uh, paint underneath here and it left a texture so let's look and see if you take for example a paintbrush and um, oops I made a little mark here let me take that off so if you take your paintbrush and you were to drag it across a textured surface, you can make these neat effects like this, right? And we can even uh, put more on there. Let me get a little bit more. And uh, let's even go over here with a paintbrush. Let's even go and say, what if we added um, white? for example, onto the smooth. You know, we can get blending and we can, um, you know, do something like that. And get some neat effects with the brush. And when we do, um, let me grab it, you know, effects like this where we blend. See, that's a blended brush effect versus a knife effect. So in painting, we can, we can make more texture uh, using a knife even on a smooth surface but um, okay so your art oh you wouldn't want your art teacher to say it's cliche well something I don't know that's so it might require some thought Caitlin it'll be um, I'll be interested to hear you know what you came up with so yeah it, it's finding the right topic will be important absolutely all right so let me now grab a thing. Let's let's take another brush and let's put some white paint on this uh, textured surface. So if we did, for example, just a, a light over this texture, and we can make these kind of effects. So if you paint something um, with a lot of texture and then come back over with another color, you can do some things like that. But uh, let me show you um, what's really neat is if you take a textured uh, bottom and then you put um, something over the top with a palette knife. You see you can make some really strong and graphic effects that are harder to do. Uh, and I won't put that over on the thing. And you can do a combination too. You can do brushes together um, with paint. So let me put a little bit of red on here so we can do blending with this but um, do you see that the texture on the bottom here creates a very different look than having a smooth surface to begin with and um, so here was again smooth painting with a brush and then this one was the uh, palette knife and if we take uh, if we take the tape off let's just take this tape off here we can see the differences between the different methods. So those are just, in your art practice, it's kind of fun in your art practice to vary uh, the technique and the textures. So if we just, let's get all the masking tape off of here. And this was just an archival masking tape. Let's pull this off here. There we go. Okay, so if we look at paint techniques or paint effects that we can get for our work. Ooh, that's kind of loud when it pulls, isn't it? So here was the effect that we can get with just a brush. And all, we're, we're, all we were doing is just, you know, a brush and... There are so many more techniques that a person can make. But, uh, so here we go. Here we had 
um, brush only, a smooth flat surface. Here was palette knife, uh, or painting knife, um, on a flat surface, uh, and we can create texture effects. Here is uh, painting with a brush over a thickly applied texture, and here's painting with a knife with the same colors over a thickly applied texture. So you can, you know, be looking at this and be thinking in your own practice, you know, hey, what kind of effects do I want to create and how might I incorporate this or not incorporate this? What effects do I like? Uh, you know, what do I want to do? Sometimes on any one individual painting, it's fun. Let me grab this other painting for that. So this, uh, uh, this landscape I had done, I did a combination of different effects, although this was all done with a palette knife. I did uh, a variety of highlights, and I did um, uh, scraping away, scraffito, um, all different things using the knife. And then um, when you look at this abstract piece, this was done with the blending technique and then the scraping across. And this was all done uh, just with palette knives in a very gestural effect. And uh, you can't really get this kind of effect with brushes um, where it's three-dimensional. If I turn the canvas a little bit, you can see it's three-dimensional. But um, in my um, art practice, this is this technique that, um, that I developed, daubism, where I apply daubs of paint. This is really um, what I use the knives for the most is I'll do a flat painting first, an underpainting with uh, the brushes, and then go in and, um, and then apply with knives, apply the individually mixed colors. And, um, and oh, hey, and Bob the, Pop, uh, Bob the Pope. Hey, good to see you, Bob. Um, and so anyway, I uh, just wanted to share these different ways with you, um, and I'm hoping that um, if nothing else, the idea number um, number one about mixing and trying to use your brushes, um, trying to use if you if you don't use a knife with a metal knife with wood handle or a metal if you just use like a plastic spoon or a plastic knife something like this to mix your paint, um, it is so much a better painting experience than using your actual brushes because when you use your brushes to mix. I'll get it out again. This was the paper towel that was needed to wipe afterwards all of the stuff to get all of the gunk off of this poor little brush that we sacrificed <laughs> for this live stream. And he still has stuff in him. If I, you know, he's still, look at that. There's still stuff caught in there. And it literally took one wipe with the knife and it was clean. So, um, so this is a thing, um, if you paint with this brush, and it has all of this color caught in here, not only will the brush harden and die, but the, um, your colors will all look muddy uh, when you're painting and they're all gonna be, look at that, there's still stuff in here. I'm just dipping it in a little bucket of water. But look at that how, so if there's any one lesson out of this whole thing, it would be do not use your brushes to mix any kind of a quantity of paint. It's okay to just take, like let's say I wanted to just mix this a little bit you know, if I just mix this over here and mix it like that, that's fine. Um, but then uh, there's very little that you have to get off on the brush. But once you get up into the ferrule, which is this guy, then um, then it's it's the end for the brush. So, and hey Siri, good to see you. And so Caitlin, you're saying that you might use a palette knife to add some abstract elements. Yeah, okay, and I, I encourage you to do that, Caitlin, and let me know, you know, how it goes. So, um, and so, so thank you for saying that, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chrissy, for saying that. And, um, and so now, look at that. I'm still trying to get, <laughs> good gracious, we are still trying to get these things off here. So, all right, well, I want to thank everyone so much for joining and I hope that, uh, that you'll join me again here in the studio. So until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and bye-bye. All right, and take care, everyone, and uh, so good to see you.